are the knights dedicated to Christ and his holy mother. We, we are the knights of St. Michael. We will all face an inescapable truth in our lifetime. We will die. We were not made to live forever on this planet. No, we were made for eternal life and eternal happiness. We were made for an eternity spent celebrating with our Creator. This earth is simply our way of getting there, our path to attain everlasting glory and happiness. The saints have even said that our time on this planet is a time of exile from our true homeland, a place of restlessness until we rest in the loving care and protection of God the Father. Because of the reality of sin, we're all going to die. But we were created to live forever with God in heaven. Think of it this way. Your death should be your birthday into eternal life. A celebration of such proportions that we cannot even imagine it with our brains. From the day we're born, we begin a march toward death. So our time on earth can be viewed in two different ways. A dying life or a living death. What? Does that sound morbid to you? You'd rather not think about death but focus on the beautiful life you've been given? Us too. We must appreciate and enjoy God's most precious gift. But we also want to live with our end in mind. So come with the knights as we contemplate our inevitable end and discover the reality that we must live like we're in heaven. The knights are on now. It's nighttime. be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also and you know the way where I am going. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Henceforth you know him, and have seen him. I told you to be ready last night by eight o'clock. And look at you. You didn't even comb your hair. But if you hadn't taken me combing me brush yesterday and used it on the dogs, I would have been just fine. But no, it Mr. seems like the dogs O'Shea. are more important nowadays. Oh, John, so that's uh, For you 70 see. years, we ought to be able to form a We are on the air. Uh, welcome, everyone. Today we have with us a wonderful couple from Shannon Island who just celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. Please help me welcome Mr. and Mrs. John O'Shea. Mrs. John O'Shea, could you... I beg your pardon, darling, but I got a name of me own, and I'd like to be called by me own name. I hear women these days want to have their own identity. So, I'll answer to Mary O'Shea. Forgive me. Uh, Mary O'Shea. Mm -hmm. So, you two just celebrated your 70th wedding anniversary. Um, what advice would both of you give to a couple who's about to get married? But to be truthful, it was a grand thing it was. Uh, I was a happily married man for almost 70 years, but this past year, I must admit, 
it's been a cold house. Me wife Mary decided to up and express herself and got involved in the fancy hats ladies movement and all the fancy hats told her that she needed to go out more and enjoy herself. Huh? You know, fancy dancing. Aye, oh, John, it is true. But fair is fair, me dear. I have been a slave to this lad for almost 70 years. It's what my fancy friends say. It's about time he took care of me. So, now I'm allowed to do the things I wanted to do for years, and John does all the housework. Really? Uh, I mean, that must have been quite a change for the both of you. Uh, Mary, what do you do with this newfound freedom? Uh, my dear, oh, I beg your pardon. Do you mind if I answer that question? She follows me around the house all day and tells me what to do, nags me all the time. And then as soon as I do what she tells me to do, she'll up and redo it. She'll oh. reset the table, remake the bed, rewash the laundry, refold the clothes. She'll do all these things that I had well, already... Well, I, I tell you, it's because I just had a lot of pride in our little cottage overlooking the River Shannon for years. John won the Tidy Yard Award, and we had prize men in Rose Gardens. See, I like things to be perfect. Aye. But no, he has let everything go. It has all gone to weeds, and we've both been unhappy the last few years. To be truthful, we're, we're thinking, thinking about, about getting, getting a, a divorce. divorce. After all those years? No, you can't be serious. Maybe this is a good time to uh, focus on the good times. You know, uh, Mr. O'Shea, what's, what's your fondest memory of Mary? Hmm. Well, I, actually, my dear, that's an easy one. I can remember the first time I ever saw her. It was on the cliffs of Maher. Uh, she was wearing a, a blue checker dress, huh? <laughs> and her and her long hair was was blowing in the ocean wind, and uh, uh, we was on a school picnic, and I I was too embarrassed even to speak to her. Why, John, I remember that today too. Huh? You wore a red shirt, and you had a black knitted sweater. I, I, the first time he I looked at me, I cried. From that day on, mind you. I never looked at another Colleen. Uh, and up till a year ago, we never had a harsh word. Uh, of course, there were hard times, mind you. Plenty of hard times. Uh, there was the year that we lost the farm. There was the year of the big wind. There was the year that the famine came. But Mary, she never lost the faith. Not even when our little Joey moved on to heaven. She'd just look at me and she'd say, Someday, loving me heart, all this will be worth it. Heaven is our true home, and this is the only way to get there. So, this Liz, I'd say on the whole, marriage is a great and beautiful thing. But things can change. If you please, Miss Liz. Why, John? Have I really changed so much? Am I so different from that young Colleen in the blue checkered dress? Sometimes I know I forget things. But I can remember the day I walked down the aisle of St. Patrick's and you took me hand and we made a vow. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I said I'd always love you and honor you for all the days of my life from that day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. You know, I realize I'm young, but I'm old enough to know what true love looks like. Modern day society doesn't seem to understand it anymore. It doesn't realize that sacrifice means love, and that God knew it was not good for man to be alone when he created marriage. True love is a beacon of light to the world, and your commitment through thick and thin is such an incredible testament. It proves that God's plan works. 
Heaven is our real home, and it's not always an easy journey, but I think they're gonna make it. Don't let this brave new world try to tear you down and convince you there is something greater or something better than what you have. One true love, until death do you part. I miss Liz, and that's common sense. Pleasure to introduce to you the one, the only, Mr. Positive! Thank you. Thank you. Today's seminar is on the distraction technique. The first thing you should know is that humans are a very lazy lot. For the most part, it takes very little to steer them clear of him. As he himself admitted, the gate that leads to hell is wide and easy, and those who enter by it are many. But the gate that leads to heaven is narrow, and the way is hard, and those who find it are few. We have set things up so that this is more true today than it was 2,000 years ago. Today, we have countless means to turn their brains off and turn their thoughts into meaningless, time-wasting affairs. To that end, my faithful legion, Mini Positive will demonstrate for you what we have termed the distraction technique, turning life into a total waste of time. Exhibit A. Gluttony mixed with constant, mindless entertainment. We fill their bodies with junk foods and fill their thoughts with a steady diet of junk television as well as pointless facts and an incalculable number of commercials. Exhibit B, entertaining games mixed with a serious lack of sleep. These life simulators, the most popular of which are brutal, murderous and morally corrupt war games, this tactic is addicting, time-wasting, all-consuming, and very effective. We have noticed that even if these souls aren't physically playing the game, they still spend much of their time and effort trying to get back to it, focusing all their skill and attention on pointless and worthless affairs. Exhibit C. Looking for new ways to chat, socialize, browse, or catch up on the latest gossip? We can turn online social sites into the most happening places in town. So exciting. You needn't leave the comfort of your own home to see what your friends are up to. With this harmless and unobtrusive tool, hours upon hours can be spent not praying or doing something meaningful, but just catching up on rumors and general chit-chat, all in this artificial social life. Exhibit D, pick your poison from any of the following. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, all dirty little vices that make mincemeat of your God-given talents and precious little time. But Exhibit E is my absolute favorite. It is the culmination of all my time-wasting, life-stealing efforts. The Me Phone. Everybody's got one, whether they are six years old or 66 years old. It is the ultimate addictive distraction. These days, people even sleep with them. The point of today's lesson is to take advantage of the weaknesses in the human race and capitalize on their inability to live a life worthy of their creation. Make them spend every moment wasting time and they'll never know what they've missed till it's gone. How in the world can they get to heaven if they're too busy for heaven while they're in the world? 
So when death comes a knocking, they will have no idea which way is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cosette and I went to a funeral yesterday. It was for our neighbor, John. He was in a terrible accident and he didn't make it. He was only five years old. Oh my goodness. It was awful. Oh, Derek, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, it seems like when a child dies, it's the worst thing because it seems they were robbed of a long life, robbed of its joys and experiences. You feel bad because you wish they could live. Exactly. John always told us how he was going to be a pilot when he grew up and fly big airplanes. He was so excited to get a dog when he turned six. He always had a smile on his face when he walked up our driveway to come play with our little brothers. Oh, we miss him so much. I know you guys are really sad, but you have to remember that God has a plan. It's really hard, but death is a part of life. And we have to trust God that his plan is perfect and pray that John makes it to heaven. Our time on earth is such a gift. It's when we have the chance to build up the kingdom of God and show him how we long to be with him in heaven. You may be tempted to think John didn't have enough time to do that, but God knows he's the creator of life. Well, John must have accomplished his mission here on earth. A while ago, we found a song about a woman who lost her child in an accident. It was so sad to feel her pain and sorrow, probably much like what you two are going through right now. When we see how fragile life is, it really makes us take a good look at our own lives and what we want to do with the time we have left. I think it also gives us a greater respect for life. I was sitting in my study writing letters when I heard Mama, Grandma said you must not be disturbed But I'm so tired of the kitty, I want some other thing to do Are you writing letters, Mama? Can I write a letter to you? and play with your kitty now. But please, can I write a letter? I can if you show me how. I need to write to my daddy. I just don't He sat down to write his letter, then looked up to me and said, How about I be the letter mommy instead? Then he parted back the curls from his forehead high and white. A postage stamp he pasted neath his waves of golden light. Now go. So he ran to tell his grandma just what he had done. I can still hear him say, I'm a letter for my daddy. I'm on my way. Love you, Mommy. I miss you, Daddy. I could not hear his childish chatter as once more he climbed the stair. No one saw him find his cat. No one saw him standing there. No one heard the front door open. No one saw the golden hair. 
bounce upon his tiny shoulders in the October air. Down the street my baby ran to the office door. I'm a ladder, Mr. Postman. Is there room for just one more? I must go to my daddy. He lives with The clerk answered in wonder, not today, my little man. Then I'll find another office. I must go if I can. The postman would have stopped him, but the bleeding face was gone. The little feet were in a hurry, and the busy crowd pushed on. Suddenly the street emptied as they fled from left to right. Away from maddened horses who at that moment dashed in sight. No one saw his baby figure, no one saw his golden hair, till his scream pierced the air. It was too late, his little body now lay lifeless on the ground. They had called and they had shouted to lament what they had found. Reverently they raised my darling, brushing back his curls of gold. They brought his broken body to my arms to hold. Back into my study. On his face, the stamp he had placed. Daddy's letter was delivered to God. This world is an amazing place. It was created by God for us to be our home. It is perfectly suited to our needs from the air we breathe to the food we eat, the changing seasons. There is so much of this world that we can't even see that contributes to our well being the sun, the stars, the flowers, the oceans, the animals, everything was made for the glory of God and for the service. Of mankind. This earth was made for us, and we were made for the earth. But we were not created to stay here forever. We spend our short years enjoying life and working out our salvation, fulfilling our mission, however large or small. Our moment of death, though usually surrounded by sadness and mourning, is what we are meant to live for. It is a moment that sets in stone where we will spend eternal life. Like Dismas, the good thief, let us pray to remain faithful to our Lord at the very end. Let us beg to be allowed into his kingdom. And like our mother Mary, we pray to live every day with God in our hearts. Death should be our birthday into the heavenly kingdom and thus a celebration of our lives. Do everything you can to make heaven your home. We must live like we're in heaven. In other words, live lives of joyful fidelity. God created you for a purpose, to know, love, and serve him in this life, that you may spend eternity with him in the next. That's it. That's why you're here. And we, the Knights of St. Michael plan to join you there.
Hey, Joe, um, what are you doing later? You gonna go get some wings? Hold on, he is, he's talking to me. Hey, me and Joe are going to get wings later. Would you wanna go? Yeah, he wants to go, dude. That's sweet. Yeah, that, that'll be sweet. We'll meet up at your house later. Hey, do you wanna go to his house later? No, why? Hey, I don't think we can't. His dog's gonna die. Sorry. All right, I'll talk to you later. Dude, we pulled that one off so good. So yeah, do you wanna go get wings though?